Um, but I don't want to take too much of your time. So as I mentioned, guys, we, if we're going to go and find the sum, we can simply go ahead and find this, all right? But the next thing that I forgot, the next thing I didn't add to you on the instruction was um, that I'd probably recommend, Ashley, to write in under the instruction is the sum formula. If we want to find the sum and we don't want to add all the terms together, we can simply use this formula. Okay. okay. Now, it's very important to understand what all this information means. Now, S of n represents the sum for the nth term. Well, n represents how many terms we're going to be solving in the sequence. Okay. So for instance here, how many terms did I have? Four, four right? So we would say there are four terms. So n is going to represent how many terms you're going to be taking the sum of, where a sub 1 represents the first term, n represents how many terms you're taking the sum of, and then a sub n would represent the last term. So you'd have the last term, the first term, the total number of terms, right? divided by 2, and then you do all that math, and you're going to get the sum. Now the problem with this, with this formula is great. The problem with it is, do we know how many terms are in this se sequence? No. no. We know what a sub 1 is. We know a sub 2. We know a sub 3. But we're not going to want to keep on adding until we get up to, or we're not going to do 138. We're not going to keep on adding even until we get up to 38. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and use the other formula that you guys have written that you guys have written down previously for all uh, arithmetic sequences. So h of n equals um, bum, bum, a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. If you guys remember, that was what we called the explicit formula. Everybody should have already had this formula written down on their notes. Yep, that's old notes. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use that formula. You are going to be constantly using that formula. Anytime you have an arithmetic sequence, you're going to want to remember, pull out this formula and think about it. So let's look at this. What information do we have? The thing, is, the thing that we have is we know a sub 1, which is 5. And do we know what the difference is? Three. Crystal, this is not helping your case right now. Wow, you're always complaining. a sub 2 minus a sub 1. Okay. If you guys look at this, remember the difference, a sub 2 minus a sub 1, it has to be the same for all the terms. So if I do a sub 2 minus a sub 1, I do 8 minus 5, which is 3. And then I want to make sure, is 3 the common difference between all the terms so far? Yeah. Yes. So I can say a sub 1 times n minus 1 times 3. Now, I don't know n, right? n tells you, see now, the number of terms in this, for, in this sequence. We don't know n. But we know a sub 1, which is the first term, and we know the difference. So now, what I'm going to do is apply distributive property. a sub n equals 5 plus 3n minus 3. Now, I combine like terms. 5 minus 3 is 2. So I can say a sub n equals 3n plus 2. Anybody have any questions on how I got to that point so far? No. OK. So now, again, what is it we don't Now, remember, guys. Remember when I gave you guys, remember the first day we talked about sequences? I said, hey, find the, first fi find the first five terms, right? Remember we did that? What do we do to find the first term? We plugged 1 in for n, right, in this case, n. And if I said, what's the second term? You plug 2 in for n. And then I say 3, the third term, you'd plug in n. You just kept on plugging in n, right? Or you kept on plugging in what number in the sequence? Yes, Chris. Huh? OK, fine, I'm going to go over the answers on the test. That's cool. Um, in this case, You're missing out on test answers. So, stupid. CNN, please, please. Um, so the thing that we do not know, though, is we don't know what number term this is. We don't know. We don't, this is a sub n for all we know, right? We don't know what number this is going to be. So what we're going to have to do, we know that a sub n is 38. We just don't know what n is. So I'm going to plug in 38 equals 3n plus 2. I'm going to subtract a 2 and get 36 equals 3n. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and I get n equals 12. Now that's very, very important. Because now I know that this is not a sub n. This is now a sub 12. right? Because I know now there's 12 terms. If you were to keep on counting. 
Um, that's by 3, right? 14. If you were to keep on counting, a sub 12 would be 38. Because now to do the sum, you have to know what n is. You have to know how many terms you're finding the sum for. So the sum of uh, 12 terms is going to equal 12 over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub 12. All I did for the first step was just plug in 12 in for n. Do you guys, do you guys see how I, whatever I plugged in for, whatever I replaced, since I replaced 12 in for n, I replaced that everywhere? Do you guys see that? Because yeah. n represents 12 now. n represents the number of terms. We know the number of terms is 12. So now, I, do I know what a sub 1 is? Five. Do I know what a sub 12 is? Yeah. yeah. So now I do a sub 12, or s of 12 equals 12 divided by 2 is 6 times 5 plus 38. Now, all I simply need to do is add, I use my distributive property, um, 5 plus 38 is going to be a 4dt3. And then I go ahead and multiply, which would be 258. If you guys want to check my work, please. Yeah, please check my work. Jazeel, how many times have you gotten like 